Today, we will be working on direct and inverse variation. This is Teeks from Algebra 2, 6L. So the equation for direct variation is going to be y equals kx. As x increases, my y is also going to increase. This would be an example of direct. Inverse variation equation is y equals k divided by x. As x increases, y is going to decrease. Now, mainly what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to figure out what your k value is, what that constant is. So we are going to solve for k when we have a table to decide if this is going to be direct or if it's going to be inverse. So pay attention here because they can be, they can get them switched a little bit easily. So on direct variation, I want to solve for k. So to solve for k, I divide by x. So if, if y divided by x is constant, then you have a direct variation problem. For inverse variation, to solve for k, you would multiply by x. So if the k is constant when you multiply, then you have an example of inverse variation. Okay. So when we look at this first table, we are going to see if when we divide them, is it the same? Or when we multiply them, is it the same? And if we do both of these and they're not the same, then the answer is neither. So let's look at this. We are going to go ahead and we're going to draw a new table. We're going to see if it's inverse. When I multiply them, I should have a constant k value. Or if it's direct, when I, multi when I divide them, I should have a constant k value. So I have four terms here. So I'm going to take these first two numbers and I'm going to multiply them. 1 times 18 is 18. Next is 2 times 9. Then 3 times 6. And then 6 times 3. All of those numbers are 18. Well, notice then that my k value is 18 when I multiply them. So what does it look like if it's not? Well, let's try dividing. 18 divided by 1 is 18. 9 divided by 2 is 4.5. And as you can see, the numbers are not the same. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And 3 divided by 6 is 1 half. So I typically won't fill out the whole table if I see it right away. But this problem has proven that this is an example of inverse variation. It's inverse variation and my k value is 18. So this is an example of inverse. And inverse is y equals k over x. So y equals 18 over x. So let's try it again. If it's inverse, and I multiply and they're the same, I can guarantee it's inverse, I've proven it. Or if I think it's direct, I have to divide. And if it's the same, then I've proven that it's direct. So we're gonna start by multiplying them. One times five is five. Two times 10 is 20. And as you can see, I don't have to finish this table because those are already different values. This problem cannot be inverse. So let's try dividing to see if they're the same. So divide, five divided by one is five. 10 divided by two is five. And the last one is 15 divided by 3 is 5. And I do want to finish the whole table just to ensure. My last one is 20 divided by 5. Okay, hold on. I've gotten 5 three times. Don't be quick to call this direct because 20 divided by 5 is actually going to be 
a four. So guess what? This is neither direct nor inverse, okay? Go ahead and try the last one on your own. Pause this video here and let's see if you can get the correct K value. Okay, let's check how you did. When I started multiplying them, I got four and I got 36. That was already proven that this was not inverse, okay? Remember, inverse, as you notice, um, remember, k over x, so as x increases, my y should be decreasing, and it's not. When I divided, though, to solve for k, I did get a constant of 4, so my equation would be 4x. Now we're going to use those two formulas again. We're going to use the direct and inverse formula to go ahead and find my k value and write an equation. So we're gonna start off by reading that the variables of x and y vary inversely. Super important because it's gonna tell me which formula I need to use. My formula for inverse is y equals k over x. And what it tells me next is that my y equals 32 and my x equals four. So when my y equals 32, my x equals 4. And this is why we got the whole multiplying, because how do I get rid of a divide by 4? I'm going to multiply by 4 on both sides. And yeah, it's a pretty big number. We have 128. So 128 equals to k. So my equation is y equals 128 over x. Now we can plug any number into x to find what the y value is. And if it's a decimal, you can leave it as a decimal or you can put a reduced fraction. So now it wants to know what is y when x equals 14. Well, y equals 128 over 14. And that gives you an ugly decimal, so just reduce as much as possible, and you're left with 64 over 7. Now, hopefully you guys get some whole numbers, but all you do would be to divide these two numbers. So go ahead and pause this video here and follow the same steps to try to answer number 2. Okay, check how you did on this. This one looked a little bit prettier than the one above it. We used the inverse variation because it used the word inversely. When I plugged in these values, I got a 30 for k, so my equation is y equals 30 over x. Now, it wanted to know what was the y value when x equals 15, so plug the 15 into x, and 30 divided by 15 is 2. So we're going to do exactly the same thing, but when we start looking at this one, a key word that should pop out to you is the word directly. And when you see directly, you should write down the equation of y equals kx. And what we know so far is that 32 is equal to k times 4. So how do I solve for k? Well, divide by 4 on both sides. My k value is 8. So a direct variation problem would be y equals 8x. So here is the equation, okay? And now it wants us to find y when x equals to 9. So we're going to plug a 9 into the x value, and 8 times 9 is 72, and this is your final answer. So go ahead and pause this video and try number 4 on your own. Okay, check how you did. So we used the direct variation because of the word directly. When I plugged in the values, I got that k is equal to 9. So when I plug the 9 into my equation, I have y equals 9x. And then it wanted us to find y when x equals 5, so 9 times 5 is 45, okay? Now the last questions we're going to do are going to be the real-world application of inverse variation. So the volume of gas varies inversely. So when I see the word inversely, guys, you need to write down y equals k over x. But now here's the deal. They didn't use y and x. They used volume and pressure so volume is equal to K over P. Still an example of inverse variation. Now, if the volume is 24, 24 inches squared with the pressure of three pounds per inch squared, this is where your PSI comes from. 
your PSI is your pounds per square inch. We're going to plug the 3 in there. Now, how do you solve for your K value? Opposite of dividing by 3 is multiplying by 3. So 3 times 24 is 72. So we have found our K value. So for this equation, our volume is equal to 72 divided by the pounds of pressure per inches squared. So here is our equation. Now it wants to know what if the pressure was 9? Well, let's plug in a 9. The volume is equal to 72 divided by 9. So the volume is equal to 8 inches cubed. Okay, go ahead and pause this video. Try the real world example number 2 and see how you do. Okay, check how you did. Now I know, I'm hoping that you guys got to the 6300 without any issues. Now this is where it got kind of tricky. This time they didn't give you the denominator. They didn't give you the frequency. They gave you the length of the violin string. So if you made a mistake, it was probably mixing these two numbers up. Okay, so it was 12 equals 6300 over F. So solve for F and you have 6300 over 12 and your answer is 525. Okay, hopefully this video helped you with direct and inverse variation and gave you some real world problems to how these are used in real life. Have a great day.